For some time now, I've been riding all over the frontier hunting for the man who framed me and sent me to prison. I've never run across him yet, but I've met all kinds of outstanding American citizens. Professional men like the James boys, Jesse and Frank, who had so much to do with the establishment of a sound financial system in the West. Mainly by making banks buy bigger and stronger safes. The Dalton boys, the Younger brothers, the Reno brothers, who understood that the secret of a thriving economy is to keep a lot of money in circulation. Of course, it happened to be other people's money, but it's the principle that counts. But the Flansing brothers, Hoke and Jude, were just about the meanest, nastiest, most bloodthirsty, ruthless killers who ever lived. The nicest thing I ever heard said about them was that once they shot a man through the heart, which killed him quick. I don't have anything to do with people like that, of course. That's because I've always managed to keep away from violence. Just ask anybody. My name's Destry. I got this craving of mine for peace during the couple of years I spent in Texas State Prison. Since I got out, I spent most of my time looking for Charlie Bent, the man who belonged there instead of me. I never had anything to do with the Flansies. Most of their killing and robbing was done when I was just a boy. My father used to tell me about them. He had a run-in with them once. And that's when there were three Flansies instead of two. My pa made the difference. Then, 18 years ago, Oak and Jude left their gang behind and rode into a law-abiding little town named Newton. That turned out to be the second biggest mistake they ever made. Because while Newton was law-abiding, the folks there expected everybody who came into town to be law-abiding also. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, sure, good morning. go down in posterity. Destry was his name. Destry. What happened?
was I was moving toward Durango where I was due to catch a stage for Tucson. The last thing in my mind was people like Hoke and Jude Flanzig or what might be going on inside the territorial prison. The trouble with real nasty folks like the Flanzigs is that they never forget. You think they'd be satisfied with three meals a day and a roof over their head? Not Hoke and Jude. They wanted blood. See if you can get us a couple more boys. Some of the old bunch, if you can. I think there's still a couple around, Hoger. All right, you bring them here. Then you get on the Newton. Newton? Ain't that where you two got arrested last time? For 18 years, Jude and me have been planning on getting even with that town. We're going to do it good. Now, when you get to Newton, you hang around there for a while and you keep your eyes open. We'll meet you on the Silver Springs Road a week from Monday. You're gonna hit it, huh? When we get done with it, there ain't gonna be no town named Newton. Now get going. And Barn, on your way, you might pass the word that we're figuring on stopping by. Give them a week or so to squirm. I'd sure hate to have you boys mad at me. This is all your fault, Joe. You were the main one in catching them. Well, you sure didn't want them robbing your bank. And that picture you holding a gun on Hope Flanzig, that got you plenty of votes for mayor. Now, don't now, you try everybody to... Everybody calm down. Let's look at this thing calmly. Yeah. Now, are you real sure, Joe, these young Flanzig brothers are coming back here after 18 years? Sure, I'm sure. I tell you, the Flanzigs are going to be here today. And from what I hear, they're worse today than they were 18 years ago. Maybe after all this time, they're not mad anymore. Yeah, I got word that there was hardly a day went by that they didn't swear that they'd pay us back for sending them to prison. Who all knows they're coming? Just us so far. I don't know what to do. This town has grown old, just like us. And there's hardly a good fighting man in the country anymore. Well, what are we going to do? Forty years I've been here. Thirty-three of them as sheriff. And all that time, as far as I can remember, I don't think that I have ever lied. In fact, I never lied to anybody. But now... I got a letter. The son of an old friend of mine is coming in on the stage today. Who? Tom Destry's son. Tom Destry cleaned up Abilene, the toughest lawman who ever lived. He must have taught his boy everything he knows about that. Then we're out of trouble. Oh, not necessarily. Young Destry claims that he takes after his mother. Well, maybe he does. But I heard that if you get him mad enough, he's as good as his pa ever was. Trouble is, that's going to take a lot of getting. Doggone it, this is a good town. And I'll be hanged if I'm going to stand by and see those Flanzig brothers ruin it. I'm going to get that boy on our side. How are we going to make him fight for us? 
We give him something to fight for. Now, you boys meet him when he gets in here. And we'll give him this town. You give him this town. Don't tell him anything about the Flansig brothers. And you lie to him. You lie blue rings around him. You tell him this is the most peaceful, friendly town that ever was. And in case your conscience hurts you, just think of all the decent people who stand to lose everything unless we turn out to be the best liars who ever opened their mouths. I'm a friend of his pa's, and so I reckon I better not meet him at first, you know. So you, you just try and convince him, and then I'll swear him in. And I hope the good Lord agrees that sometimes the end justifies the means. Simpson, I'm Jake Weatherby. Uh, I'm the mayor of Newton, and Jake here's the undertaker. It's our pleasure to greet you and to offer you the key to Newton, the most peaceful town in America. Mighty nice of you. I was expecting an old friend of mine. Uh, you must know him. Mr. Joe Finster? Oh, certainly do. <laughs> Sheriff Finster was delayed. That's why we're here. He asked us to come and meet you and buy you a drink. Well, I sure would like that, but, well, the stagecoach won't be here too long. Oh, that's always at least an hour. Oh, and it would break our hearts if you refuse the key to our town, sir. Why don't we step across to the Newton Pleasure Palace? Most beautiful girl in the territory works there. Well, that, that would be mighty nice, but to be honest with you, Mr. Weatherby, Mr. Simpson, I'm a little short on fun, so I gotta take it easy. <laughs> Please, call us Bill and Jake. Yes, and, and now, no more arguments, young fella. Now, uh, have you got it all straight, Sally? Yes. But, Mr. Hanson, I... Oh, I, I'm not too sure about wearing this dress. Oh, nonsense. It, it's going to look fine on you. Well, then all I have to do is be friendly to your Mr. Destry? Yeah, no, very friendly. And remember, if he asks you to go out with him... Tomorrow night, but not tonight. Right. But why tomorrow night? Never mind about that. Go on, get the dress on. Uh, buy a drink for a friend of old Joe Finster's. our pleasure. I guess one wouldn't wear it. Mr. Finster. How are you? Sure is good to see you. I'm just fine, Destry. Good to see you too, son. Did you get my letters saying I'd be passing through? Yes, I got it. We'll just take you, Mr. Destry, for a drink. Well, you're joining us, aren't you? Well, not right now. I've got a little work to clear up. I'll see you before the stage leaves. We've got a lot to talk about. Old Joe just works too hard. That's all that's wrong with him. Now, now come on, Destry. Well, I sure hope I get a chance to visit with old Joe before my stage leaves. Well, now, this will be Mr. Destry. It's a pleasure, sir. A real pleasure to have you grace my establishment. How do you do? Uh, this is Whit Hanson, Destry. I tell you, sir, ever since we heard you were coming to Newton, that's all we've been talking about. <laughs> Things must be pretty dull around here. <laughs> well, you mean a lot to us, Destry. You're our kind of people. Well, it's mighty nice of you to say that. I think under the circumstances, the least I can do is buy us all around. Uh, make mine a small beer. Oh, oh, no. After what the Destrys have done for us, you have the finest whiskey in the house. And as long as you're in town, you will never pay for a drink when you're in my place. No, sir. Uh, after what the Destries have done for you? Yes, sir. Why, he doesn't know. Tell him, Bill. It was your pa, Tom Destry. Rest in noble yeah. soul. Yeah, man. Uh, come in here to Newton some uh, 20 years ago. Give uh, it take a year or two. Yes, yes, and cleaned the rotten element out of the town. Yes, sir, he made this town what it is today, the cleanest, the friendliest law by town in the West. Right. My dad did that? Yes, yes. sir. Funny, I never heard him mention it. Well, now, your pa wasn't one to brag much, you know. True. Like father, like son, I always say. 
Oh, I take after my mother. I didn't want to seem ungracious, but the last time anybody was this nice to me, she slipped knockout drops in my drink. What we mean, Destry, is that we figure the town owes you more than we can repay, but we're going to try. Well, now, what you have in mind? Well, uh, for instance, uh, I own the bank, so if you need a loan. Loan? All you have to do is ask. And no interest. Don't worry about collateral. No interest. Yes, uh, if we're your friends, we're your friends all the way. Well, this surely is the friendliest town I've ever been in. Here's to Newton. <laughs> that was the stage. Oh, it's a... No, I couldn't. No, 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 no Everything I own in the world is on it, that's all. Oh, no, they put your stuff out on the boardwalk. At least, I suppose it was your stuff. You know, they probably decided that you decided not to go on. Well, if a fellow's going to miss a stage, I guess there's no better place to do it than this. Anyway, I can always keep going on horseback. Oh, no, you don't do that, Destry. Why not? Well, this is terrible horseback in territory. Uh, besides, Destry, there's no need to go. We told you, the town is yours. Yes, but I hate to impose. It's no imposition. We talked about it. You get the best suite in the hotel, the finest steaks available. Unlimited credit at Witt's House Poker Table. Is that a fact? Yeah. <coughs> well, yeah, well, absolutely. You boys ought to change the name of this town from Newton to Heaven. We have an angel to go along with it, too. Hmm? Take Sally there. There's nothing she loves more than a good-looking young newcomer. You wouldn't rob us of a chance of showing our gratitude, would you? And just to make sure you don't lack for anything, why, we'd even throw in some pocket money. You mean you just give me this? Well, I, I suppose for tax purposes, we'd, we'd have to list it under something, uh, uh, maybe give you some sort of honorary position. Such as what? Oh, say, uh, assistant county assessor, dog catcher, uh, uh, assistant uh, deputy uh, sheriff. Something had to be wrong with this. Darned if I could figure it out. That kind of hospitality, unlimited credit. A fellow I knew told me once that if folks you don't know want to give you something, nine chances out of ten what they give you is trouble. You know, uh, couldn't help noticing that picture over there. You fellas holding on to those big tough hombres. Oh, that was taken 18 years ago, back when we were a tough town. <laughs> Those two fellas were trying to hold up the bank. Well, it's a mighty fine picture. Oh, uh, <clears throat> say, Destry, I'd like you to shake hands with Olaf Olsen, uh, a town barber. How you was, Destry? How do you do? See, I, I'd like to give you a fine free haircut. <sighs> well, now, any town where everybody's as nice as this, I think it'd be a pleasure to stay around for a few days. But, well, I just can't do it. After all, you don't owe me anything for what my father did. Anyway, I have to keep moving, so I just have to turn down your offer, generous as it is. Thank you again, gentlemen. Fellas, do you have one chance of keeping him here? I stole all his things. Say, did you see my saddlebags and bedroll out here? Yeah, they're right there. They tossed them off the stick. Why didn't you pick them up? Uh-uh. Well, I wonder who could... We ain't hardly ever had anything stolen here. Well, everybody says this is a very honest and peaceful little town. Yeah, well, maybe I'd better see the sheriff. Never mind. Where's his office? Right over there, across the street. Thank you. We couldn't talk him into it. Sure could have used your help, Joe. I can imagine. Well, I'm sorry, boys. We do have one more chance. O Olaf. What about Olaf? Howdy. Well, Joe, as you can see, I missed the stagecoach. I knew about that, Destry. 
Seems my stuff got put on the depot platform and somebody took it. They did? Well, I'll just... Oh, no, no, you sit right there, Joe. Remember, you're, you're, you're lumbago. Lumbago? What do you... Oh, my lumbago. Oi. <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. Oh, Joe, just have a bit of trouble right? getting round the bitch, you know. Yes. You know he doesn't even have a deputy. Oh, is that true, Joe? You don't even have one deputy? That's right. We don't even have one deputy. Uh, and uh, you know how we feel about you, son. Well, I... Uh, so for uh, 40... 50. 50? Uh, $50 a day. How would you like to be Joe's deputy? What do you think, Joe? Like me to be your deputy for a while? I can't think of anything I'd like better. Uh, $50 a day? Suite at the hotel. Credit at the poker table. Well, gentlemen... You just convinced me. Good. I'll get a couple more witnesses. We'll meet in my office and swear Destry in. Well, I, I wonder who took my stuff. I'll have to look into that one of these days. Now, here in the office of our honorable mayor, in front of these witnesses gathered, do you hereby swear that you will be faithful and loyal to the rules governing your office, that you will obey your superior officer? and that you will be diligent and brave in the execution of your duties? Sure do, Joe. Then I hereby pronounce you temporary deputy of Newton for a term of not more than a few days more. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Destry. Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, good luck, Destry. Thank you, Ole. <laughs> that badge looks real fine on you, Destry. Well, sorry to say Sally's that, Jake. down at my saloon won't be able to resist you now. Hey, speaking of your saloon, I thought as my first official duty, I'd just go down there and celebrate this honor. Oh, excellent idea. <laughs> you just run along and do that, son. All right. Say, there's one thing that's been bothering me. And what's that, son? Well, you mentioned your lumbago. Is it paining you much? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, ain't that just like him? Always thinking of his friends first? <laughs> yeah, you don't worry about me, boy. You just have yourself a good time, Destry. <laughs> Well, fine. I'll see you all later. What do we do now? Think we ought to tell him what's going to happen? No. Just do every blame thing we can to keep him liking us. He's going to find out sooner or later. Nobody ever faces those slangy killers without knowing it. Do you think he'll get sore when he finds out? Well, I don't know. He always had a pretty good sense of humor. He's so cockeyed peaceful, I'm not sure he'll do us any good even if he stays. Well, maybe one of you got a better idea. Hmm? No, Destry is our only chance. And all we got to do is to hope that he'll get to love this town enough that he'll stay and fight. He's only got about two or three hours to learn to love us. Sally ought to be helpful. Mr. Destry. Whit told me about you. Oh? Yes. And he said, everything's on the house. You couldn't pay a penny for anything. Thank you. They are the nicest people I've ever met. Thank you. Thank you. My, what a pretty badge. Oh, you mean that? Well, I just became Joe's deputy today. Temporarily. That's nice. Sally, how would you like to... Not tonight, Mr. Destry. Not tonight. But tomorrow night would be fine. Tomorrow night. You were going to ask me to go out with you, weren't you? Well, as a matter of fact, Sally, I was going to ask you for a drink. But going out with you would be a pleasure any night. Fine. Tomorrow night, then? Tomorrow night? Now, uh, what, what, what would you like to drink, Mr. Destry? Well, now you just call me Destry, Sally. And I'd like a nice big shot of whiskey. All right. Whiskey. Oh. I think you'll find it on that shelf behind you. Oh. impressive drink I have ever had poured for me. Thank you.
You, uh, you thinking of making a career out of the saloon business? Oh, no. Would you like some more pretzels? Oh. Well, now, uh, you've been working here long? About an hour. About an hour? Well, now, that's a coincidence. Your first day here, my first day as deputy. <laughs> Whit asked me to come in from the farm as a special favor. Replacing his regular girl? No, he doesn't have another girl. Doesn't have a regular girl? No. He... he, he kind of hoped you'd like me. They want to keep you in town. They really must be very fond of you. Yeah. Sure is flattering. Oh, Destry, how about I give you that fine pea haircut now? Well, that'd be very nice. I, I, I may not get a chance later. Hmm? Uh, 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 what I mean is that I, I, I'm very busy sometimes. Well, then let's do it now. But you haven't finished your drink yet. Well, now, a uh, real fine drink like this will sometimes last a fellow a long while. I'll be back later to work on it, Sally. We're just going to give Mr. Destry a haircut. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Olaf, but we'll, why don't you take care of this gentleman first? He, he was here. Oh, good. That won't take long. Howdy. Hey, here's the paper. Thanks. Well, Sam, but it's new. Haven't you heard about the rumor? What rumor? Well, talk is there's going to be a whole lot of trouble around here. Rumors, I just can't stand gossip. Means nothing. Tell me if it's something sure. Well, uh, maybe so. But what I heard is, might be a big gunfight downtown. Uh, you heard this, you heard that. This, this is the most peaceful town in America. Maybe the whole world. Well, at least you can hear a good customer out. You know what they say is coming in town? What are you doing putting a hot towel on top of the ladder? But that's not the way. But that's the new way. Are you going to tell me about being barber? Well, anyway, who they say is coming in town? Z Flan. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, but, but, but that slipped. It did not. You done it on purpose. Oh, no, I, I didn't do that on purpose. But we're coming in here again. So go to the next barber shop, 150 miles away. My barber shop is no place for foolish gossip. What? That's where all the gossip comes from. Oh, then you admit that it is gossip. Well, there's no charge for the shave. What shave? I'd rather shave with a... with a dull axe. I can't stand big mouth gossipy fellas. <laughs> I do for you. You the sheriff? New deputy. Uh, no trouble, is there? Trouble? Not that I know of. A friend of mine said he'd leave a message here for me. My name's Pete Johnson. Well, my name's Destry. But uh, I don't know about any message for you, Mr. Johnson. Sure he didn't leave with another deputy here? There aren't any other deputies, just me and the sheriff. Destry? No relation of that Kansas law man, Destry. Well, he was my father. You don't say. Well, that's quite a break. Uh, for Newton, I mean. <laughs> nice of you to say that. Some pals of mine were great friends of your old man. I'm beginning to believe everybody was. They'll be mighty glad to hear about you being a new deputy here. We'll only be here a few days. Well, that'll be long enough. Well, good luck in your new job. That's me. Thank you. Oh, Sheriff. Uh, any message left here for Mr. Johnson? Oh. You know, Joe... You sure were right about one thing. Yeah. Folks around here are the friendliest people I've ever seen. Who, you mean that fella? Yeah. Oh, he ain't local. I never saw him before. Oh, I got good news for you, son. What's that? Yeah, Whit found your luggage. Yeah, it's over at his place. Yeah. yeah, some drummer picked it up by mistake. Well, that's fine. Say, uh, Joe, there is a little something I've been meaning to ask you. Hmm? You know this, this barber friend of yours, Olaf Olson? Yeah. Well... Has he ever been known to, uh, you know, stretch the truth a little bit? Olaf? Yeah. 
Why, he's as honest as any man in Newton. Hmm. Well, I think I'll wander over to Whit Saloon and uh, see if there's any trouble. Yeah, well, you won't find any trouble over there. Maybe that's because I haven't got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy. Hey, Mr. Jesse. I, uh, think this is yours. You know, when your girl poured me that, I didn't know whether to try to drink it or open up my own saloon. <laughs> Say, Whit, I heard sort of a half conversation over at the barbershop's got me a little puzzled. Uh, what, uh, what was that? Well, this fellow in there kept trying to say something about... about some trouble starting around here. Only... Olaf accidentally stuck a shaving brush in his mouth. <laughs> and I'm not so sure that was an accident. Oh, that would have to be an accident. Why, Olaf would never do a mean thing like that on purpose. Well, Whit, just between you and me, has there been any trouble around here lately? The trouble? No, no, not for years. Uh, that's uh, Sally. Hmm? I thought you'd gone. I had to change my clothes. Well, so long, you... Mr. Destry, uh, Sally. I'd like a word with you. Destry, privately. Drink him. What I have to say would be too embarrassing to say it with wit for anybody else listening. Well, what is it, Sally? I think you're just wonderful. You do? I certainly do. Volunteering to be deputy the way you did. Well, what's so wonderful about that? Well, you're so brave. I am? Most men don't have the courage to stand up for law and order. Now, Sally, uh, that's very flattering, and I appreciate your feeling, but, well, there hasn't been any trouble around here lately, has there? No. Well, you see? Until the trouble now, of course. Till the trouble now. Would you do something very special for me, Mr. Destry? Sure, what is it? I think of you as sort of a knight errant defending the town. Knight errant? Would you carry this as sort of a good luck talisman when you go to meet those men? I'd be happy to. What men? The Flanzigs. The Flanzigs? Hoke and Jude. I just heard they were coming to wipe out the town. That's why I'm leaving. The Flanzigs are coming to town? And they said they'd first kill all the lawmen. Anyone else in your place would be terrified. Oh, I can imagine. I hope you won't be hurt. I guarantee you I'll do my best not to be. Free drinks? Well, how are you coming, Deputy? Oh, fine, fine. Uh, tell me, Mr. Finster, the name Flansig mean anything to you? Well, yes, now that you mention it. Huh? Two brothers, tough fellas. Uh, fairly tough. Kind of on the loco side? Uh, a little. Killed about uh, 16 men between them? Uh, somewhere around that figure. Well, now, I don't like to sound pessimistic, but I heard tell they're coming to flat in this town. You heard that? Uh-huh. And I also heard that first off, they're going to kill all the lawmen. An idea that I don't much care for. Well, I must admit it does sound a little serious. And I don't want to sound ungrateful. But I think you railroaded me to take this job. Do you think I'd do a thing as low as that? I'd be willing to bet on it. All right. It's true. Now, that's about the first honest word I've heard in this town, Joe. What are you all trying to do to me? District. Do you like the people here? Sure. You like this town? I like it fine, but I ain't fixing to die for it. Nobody wants to die for it. That's why we lied to you, son. We need you to help us fight the Flanzigs. Well, you're not going to get me. Your father never would have talked like that. My father got shot 37 times in his life, the last seven of which was all at once and killed him. Now I got the way I'm going to die all planned in an old folks' home. Your father died with his boots on. It's better to live with your boots on. What is this modern age coming to? When are those fellows supposed to get here? Probably in a couple hours or so. Good. We all have time to run. 
We can be miles away by the time they get here. You're definitely leaving, huh? I'm going to buy a horse and be in the next county in two hours. Your mind's made up? You bet your life it is. All right, I'll give you one of my horses. Hand me that water bucket in there, will you? What are you doing? I'm going to get Bill to talk to you. He's a much better talker than I am. Joe, you forgot something. Now let me out. Nope. I'll shoot. Free drinks. Free haircuts. So obviously it's your bounden duty as a conscientious citizen and the son of a fearless father to stay and fight. I have no intention of fighting. I don't care what kind of a man my father was. I don't approve of fighting. Oh, how can you admit to such a thing? Admit it, I'm proud of it. Now let me out of here. Why should we? Well, for one thing, I did nothing to get locked up for. Desertion from duty. I didn't desert, I quit. But doggone it, we don't want you to quit. Just what kind of civic leaders are you hiring a jailbird as a lawman? That's what I am, you know, a jailbird. We heard all about it. Everybody knows you can't make a deputy out of an ex-convict. That don't bother us. Besides, we heard that Charlie Ben lied on the witness stand and that you were innocent. That was my story. The jury convicted me. This is all beside the point. Now, we can just leave you locked in here till the Flanzig show up. Why don't you just shoot me and get it over with? Make it simpler all around. But we'll try one last deal with you. You can try. If we get a big posse together, will you stay then? That depends. How big? Well, how big's it got to be? Twenty men, no less. We can get that many easy. That's our deal. Any reasonable thinking man would point out that the only rational thing to do is clear out of here so the Flanzers won't have anybody to get mad at. But, all right. I just want it understood I'm doing this under duress. I hate to hear you talk like that. I've got a deep-rooted belief in caution, the avoidance of danger, and the pursuit of peace. And I've got the courage of my convictions. All right. Come on, let's get that posse started. Sheriff? Old Pawnee Jim told me he saw the Flancic brothers in Eagle Pass. They'll be here in an hour. Will you go on, keep an eye on them, and let us know when they're a couple of miles out of town? We can move faster, splitting up. Whoever joins the posse should meet here in half an hour. kid brother Carl back in Abilene. What's that got to do with it? Kind of like to get back at him, wouldn't you? Tom Duster is dead, stupid. Sure, but his kid ain't. He's wearing a star just like his old man. And he's in Newton right now. Are you sure? I talked to him. Well, now. You hear that, boys? That's what I call putting honey on the flapjacks. Let's go. Get up. After today, do you think we'll have enough to go around, Mr. Weatherby? We're forming a posse, meeting in about 25 minutes. They're coming in? Yeah, and that was a pretty dirty trick you fellas played on me. I guess it was. I mean, I can see a sheriff and a saloon keeper and a politician not having any dignity or pride. 
for an undertaker. I really meant what I said about wanting to help you in any yeah, way. Well, I appreciate your feeling. Uh, Mr. Weatherby told me what a nice man you were, Mr. Destry, and he really wants to help you. Uh, would you like to pick out a special style right now in case things don't go too good? No. Uh, it would just take a minute to measure you up for a handsome special one. No, a young, nice-looking man like yourself would really look well, we fine in front of under the, the proper office. conditions. I keep trying to impress on you, Rester. There are some people who just don't appreciate our particular art. You've got more than enough men out there, son. I told them all about you, and they're 100 percent behind you. I just assumed they were 100 percent in front of me. But. Might as well go talk to him. Ben, I just want to say... Uh, I just want to say that I, I hope all of you have safeties on those uh, shooting irons of yours. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have nothing to worry about. Sure, the Flanzings are tough. Sure, they're on their way here. There are only two of them, right? And they're better than 20 of us. Now, any man that doesn't like odds like that, just don't like odds. And I got a feeling that when the Flanges get one look at us, they'll turn right around and ride off. I feel the same way. But just to make sure... The Flanges will be here in about 15 minutes. And I say fine. We're ready for them. Only it ain't just the Flanzig brothers. It's the whole Flanzig gang. Don't say that. Are you sure? I've seen them myself. That's not so good. Well, since we're this far along, we still outnumber them. Twenty to six, not such bad odds. No. Men, don't worry about anything. We'll be... Men? Well, Joe, there goes your posse. Deserted us. Yeah, sure looks that way. I don't know what to do now. Well, I do. I'm going to the bank, get the money out, and hide it someplace. I don't see why you're just sitting there, Joe. What? I mean, I think you ought to get up and come along with me. Where? Anywhere, just away from this place. You mean run? Bet your life I mean run. run. It's the only intelligent thing left to do, and we better hurry. I'm staying. There's no time for joking. I ain't joking, Destry. Now, I know how you feel, Joe. But you remember what happened to Horatio at the bridge and the Spartans at Thermopylae and, and those fellows in the charge of the Light Brigade? They were heroes, and they got killed. Now, face the truth. The only reasonable thing to do is, is to get out of here. You're right. You can have my bay down at the stable on the corner, and you better hurry. Joe, for the last time, will you please come with me? This is my town. I've done everything I can for it, except one. Joe, I resign. For reasons of health, I want to keep mine. I'm going now, Joe. That bay will take the bit unless you keep a tight rein. You're an old fool. But you got guts. You know, that was my pa's failing, too. Goodbye, Joe.
got two horses, and this is your last chance. That was real nice of you, Destry. Well, are you coming? I just can't do it. Joe, you know if you don't get on that horse and come with me, you're going to have to stay here and face him alone. I know. For the last time, will you please come with me? I wanted to hide, but I wasn't able to. Thanks, Olaf. I hope this works. I, I haven't cleaned or, or shot this for the last 10 years. wanted to go back. He was as crazy as old Joe. Ever try to argue with a horse? Sometimes they just won't listen to reason. I two bullets for this rifle at the last minute, but I'll try for two customers. <laughs> I got better guns back in the office. Come on. Fred, we don't have time to go get them, Joe. Well, then we'll have to do the best we can. told me once. A poor shot on the ground is more dangerous than half a dozen good shots on horseback, provided they're mounted on nervous horses. And there's nothing like a fire to make a horse nervous. Well, 
You owed me fifty dollars. I was deputy for a day. Thank you.